Deborah Conway from Dore Me, and this program is about wilderness. But we're going to start in a pretty unlikely place. Like most Australians, I live in the city. Life there can start to feel like a crazy carnival ride at times. Often that's great, but there are other times when we really need places that are free of all that. For these people about to head into the bush for a few days, wilderness may be totally unfamiliar. Although each has their own idea about what they'll get out of the trip. I think it'll be good, a good experience. And I hope I get a bit more confidence in like going through the bush. Oh, I've heard that it's pretty cold and wet and, you know, it's a bit awful. And it's not too good for you, but we think it should be fun. I'm just hoping the weather's going to stay dry. It'll be fun, I think, I hope. I don't know if I'll do it again. Depends, I'll tell you when I come back. <laughs> if you do try to get people to define wilderness, you come up with all sorts of answers. So what does wilderness mean to you? Nothing. <laughs> I've got no idea what wilderness is. It's when nature is untouched by man. But walking around the city, I wouldn't know what wilderness would be, you know? Yeah. It's hard to find here. It's hard to find, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can notice that, eh? Unless you go to one of these, uh, places that have got uh, rides and that for the kiddies. Do you think that's really wilderness though? Well it's not but it's the nearest the kiddies sometimes see to wilderness today. So what does wilderness mean to you? I don't know. It means animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got any you, Breeders. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, trees. Are, what channels yeah. Is? Trees and nature and beauty and peaceful relaxing times. Hasn't been buggered up by uh, people. Yeah. Thanks very much, yeah, that's that great. Out, Is it some society or something? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, that's Wilderness really comes down to two main things. The area must be large, and it must be basically free of the effects of modern society. This is wilderness, New South Wales wilderness. In this state, we have a richer variety of wilderness areas than almost anywhere else in the world. There are the fantastic alpine regions of the Kosciuszko area and spectacular escarpment country. There's our last coastal wilderness called Nagy and semi-arid and desert areas in the west. And there are fragile and unique rainforests in the north of the state. For hundreds of millions of years, these areas were shaped and formed. But in only 200 years, over 95% of the state's wilderness has been destroyed and lost forever. It's been a virtual onslaught. Modern society has encouraged urbanization and the plundering of nature's resources. Now there's only about 4% of this state left, more or less as it was when Europeans arrived. Right from the start, the aim of the new settlers was to subdue the landscape. They saw it as strange and ugly and thought it was only of value if they could make use of it. Cities and towns grew, and at the same time, grazing, logging and agriculture were all eating further and further into untouched areas. Timber, timber, everybody's waiting for timber. Swing your axe, you lumberjack, 
Timber's gotta go down the river today. Timber, Timber. The Aborigines had lived in harmony with the land for thousands of years. What a contrast to the last 200. One way to get an idea of the amount of wilderness left is to compare it to Sydney. And one of the best ways to get an overall idea of Sydney's size is to view it from the Sydney Tower. Altogether, Sydney's area is about 1.2 million hectares. And the total area of New South Wales wilderness is about 3.5 million hectares. That's only three times the size of Sydney. The wilderness areas are like scattered islands now, and over half of what's left is totally unprotected. One of the closest wilderness areas we've got to Sydney is also the largest we've got left. It's called Colo, and it's over the horizon there to the northwest. Now, even though Colo is one of our biggest wilderness areas, it's only about a third of the size of Sydney, and some of the smaller areas would only take up a few suburbs the size of Bankstown. Those ones are really easily damaged. It seems crazy to me that so much of what's left is unprotected. People are going to need these places more and more. We live in a world where nature plays a diminishing role in most of our lives. In the past, people had a closer link with the natural world, but now we're caught up on an artificial treadmill. It's harder to keep a perspective on just who and what we are. A lot of people are looking for ways to deal with that. This is one of the newest methods, flotation tanks. Yeah, the reserves is your tank and basically you just get in there and lie in there. Yeah, well, and what makes me float? Well, there's an incredible amount of Epsom salts in the water. So there's no chance of drowning? No, not at all. This not is just one of the many antidotes to the strain of modern life. There's anything from sitting in front of the TV to meditation or going to the park. The really useful ones help to keep your life in some perspective. And that's one of the things wilderness can give. In places where there are no everyday distractions, you get the chance to feel your place in the world very strongly. It's only recently that a detailed survey of remaining wilderness areas has been made. When Landsat started beaming images back in the 70s, one of the things they were used for was to show areas of natural vegetation. They're coloured red on these images. This helped to narrow down the search for wilderness areas that are still left. Some of the areas are like this, spectacular sandstone escarpment country.
These areas are part of the Great Dividing Range. Places like the Budawangs, Kanangra and Kolo with fantastic bluffs and gorges formed by volcanoes, glaciers and rivers. Being close to major population centres, these areas need careful management if their wilderness qualities are going to be kept. Dams, mining and forestry are possible threats as well as pressure to put in four-wheel drive tracks. New South Wales has Australia's greatest alpine region, the kosciuszko jagungal area. Some of it suffers from overuse, but there is still wilderness that's got to be kept free of ski resorts and their effects. Tim McCartney Snape was the first Australian to climb Everest. He discovered his love of mountains here. The Kosciuszko Alpine area is definitely unique. There's nothing else like it in the world. It's a spectacular setting and it's a wilderness setting. There's a tremendous feeling of space and it's also the, uh, the feeling of being able to have enough terrain to really extend yourself fully in. It's, it's big enough for that here. Yeah. If I couldn't, for some reason, come to places like this, life would be very much the poorer. In well over a thousand kilometres of New South Wales coastline, this is the only coastal wilderness we've got left. Nadji is right near the Victorian border. It's a series of rivers, lagoons, sand dunes and beaches, and there are beautiful heathlands too. Unfortunately, logging and wood shipping operations have pushed right up to the western boundary, and that's increased the risk of disastrous bushfires. Towards the west of the state, there are equally fragile areas. These are the semi-arid and arid environments, and they're threatened by grazing and agricultural pressures. As well as their own special flora and fauna, some contain unique Aboriginal art sites. These areas are a real contrast to our other main wilderness type, rainforest. Rainforests are magical places. They're the most complex ecosystems in the world, and they're home for 60% of all Australia's animals and plants. They're unique, they're fragile and they're irreplaceable. In New South Wales, there are several scattered remnants left, and some of these have been put on the World Heritage List, like Washpool and Werakimbi. The rest of the state's rainforests have been ruined. Now we've only got about 20% of what used to be here. Someone who's had a long-standing interest in these places is Jack Thompson. It's only recently that Australians have begun to realise that rainforest is irreplaceable and worth preserving. This is Terrania Creek in the Nightcap National Park in northern New South Wales. And this rainforest is now included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Rainforest. This cradle of evolution contains half of the world's 10 million species of plants and animals. 
we humans also had our beginnings here in the forest. wilderness areas are a refuge for animals, birds and plants which just couldn't survive in smaller areas. If they're destroyed, these places and all the life they contain are gone forever. Wilderness has the right to exist for its own sake and for the sake of everything it contains. Already, hundreds of animals and plants have become extinct in Australia, and many others are endangered. Wilderness is a source of beauty, inspiration, and the basics of life like fresh air and pure water. So if wilderness disappears, we will lose out too. Whether we go into wilderness areas or not, our survival is linked to the natural world. We can't afford to leave the future of wild places in the balance. What we don't save now is lost forever. <laughs> <laughs> 